what what is your plan, Will? Do you plan on coming back to the city? Or <coughs> you have several people in Milwaukee area that want want me to come back and want to walk with me, and I am willing to do that. And you know, if if now I'm now I'm there, one white guy and two, three, four, half dozen, two dozen black people from the neighborhood are walking, and the police come up and start you know hassling us. I am more than willing to stand in the front and say, "Hey, you have no re you have no legal reason to stop us." I know the rights. I know the laws. Um, I know Nadir had mentioned that uh, with with the one video I posted where I was telling felon, you know, the cop doesn't legally have the right to stop you just because you're carrying a firearm. If I wouldn't, if I would have lied, I mean, how would that have looked to the community? Um, and the other part is. They want to know how I'm able to walk down the street and not worry about the cops actually stopping me legally. So I have to tell them because simply open carrying is not against the law. They don't have the right to stop me for it. Um, <coughs> I don't. I don't advise anyone who's got a felony to do it because, well. But that wasn't the perception that you gave. See, 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 see there, there are short, there are short conversations and. The, you know, the, I, I tell them, you can, but now that's your risk, and I told them, make absolutely sure you're not doing anything else wrong. <coughs> okay, so, so the question, the question is, uh, you know, what, you know, what are you going to do going forward? It sounds like you, you do plan on doing going forward. So, your concern, and it seems like, as, as Brother pointed out, is the police's response. But what we're bringing to you is the community's response, the community's perception. So what is it that you uh, are, are, are thinking about doing or, or considering doing to uh, to quell the anxiety which 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 is brought into the community as a result? If you guys want me to meet with you again and you know go over rights with you know people that you trust and want to start exercising their rights or people that come to you and say hey we want we want to learn and <coughs> be educated so we can do this without having to worry about being harassed by the police so we can defend ourselves help um, I guess intimidate the criminals to, to let them know hey if you're gonna rob a gas station there's gonna be someone there or there could be someone there willing to use lethal force to stop you because you're trying to use lethal force on someone else. I, I guess, I guess uh, what I'm saying is this. So for example, when we go out, right, um, we, we, we just had a, uh, a campaign. It's not like you're in a campaign. We had a campaign to uh, boycott Christmas things. So we went out to the community. We have flyers, we have posters. People walk past, they see all of this activity. What's going on? Boycott Christmas Oh, okay, we know what's happening there. I may or may not agree, but I know what's going on there. It's not no misperception of it. But right now, we have a campaign to stop the beef, because we're trying to stop gun violence, right? And so we set up a hotline so we can help our people, and we don't that, that may be involved in crime, but we don't see them as criminals. We try to help them to resolve the differences peacefully. So I guess maybe even having some sign, poster, let people know what it is that you're doing so at a glance they're not threatened by what you're doing. That's just, you know, that's just a just one suggestion you know, that we can do out there. We were getting you know, little trifle pamphlets with information on um, constitutional Second Amendment rights. Um, what they the same right? rights y'all have. Uh, European white people got in America ain't the same rights that the <laughs> black folk get. I mean, even though we both in America and we can say we going with uh, Second Amendment, that's just like the boy got killed at the park playing with a play gun. By itself, nobody around them. They didn't say, "Well, you'll carry your carry license." They just jumped out shooting. You know, and and y'all y'all got that right that y'all can walk around with a gun 
and they're going to say, uh, let me see your license. I don't know if they asked you that, but they didn't say, get on the ground, you know, and uh, something else I had in my head. Uh, I was wondering, since y'all walking around in the communities, wanting people to know about this, uh, there's a bunch of white neighborhoods out here in Milwaukee. Try walking straight down there and see what they do. And if a bunch of blacks did it, they probably jump out and shoot us. We have to have a big sign saying we're trying to show people to get their license. We have to show as some um, letting the people know and the police know not to shoot us. Well, y'all didn't have to have nothing but the gun in y'all hand. And that's that's one of the issues I had with y'all walking around like that. You know, that was like a disrespect. Like slapping some slapping me, I can't speak for anybody for me. Like I told you, I'm gonna give you my neighborhood fire. You know, you, you just coming in there like 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 the Caliban boys, I mean. Walk around with a gun, ready to shoot. First person come out, you gonna shoot him. Video game. I mean, I didn't know who he was. And you talking about what the police gonna do. Like he was saying, you should worry what the community gonna do. If the wrong one, out of right one would have seen you, y'all would have been in the shootout. And to pig piggyback off of what you were saying, I didn't mean to cut you off, but there were certain people in certain neighborhoods that was waiting for you, real talk. For you to walk down that neighborhood with your strapped up, they was waiting for you to come down that neighborhood, which would have been a big mess, honestly. And what we need to do is to have this dialogue but it's not up to you to come in our community to educate us about the second right amendments. Because there are a lot of people in our community that know the second right amendments that can do that. From our community, in our community. And that is no disrespect to you. But you don't live here. You know, we don't know you from Adam. It was a pleasure to meet you today. I learned more about you. But we as a community need to come together and unify. And don't take this wrong when I say this. We don't need no white savior coming in our community educating our people when we can do that. There are a lot of people out here that know what you know. This brother knows. Am I right? Mm -hmm. We could use him to educate the community because you live in the community and you were one of the I remember that situation that you had very clearly. You could come in the community. We could set up where you could educate us because you're from here, but you're not. We don't know you. And it was really scary and and a major concern. You know what I'm saying? And, and I'm, just, I'm just being real. Yeah. And I, I, with you saying that, I don't want it to get to the point where we say that um, he's not welcome. Right. Um, because, I mean, we can use the help. You know, we, we can have, like, the token white guy <laughs> helping us out, just like the opposite, you know right, what I'm saying? Right. And, and he's, he's got access to other... Um, he's got access to things that we don't have access to, you know? Um, and so... You know, I'm, I don't want you to feel like you're not welcome, um, you know. So, I mean, we can all put our heads together and work together right. on this. You are welcome in our community. It's just that the way you did it was not the way. Let somebody know. Yeah, and if you was out there um, in, like you said, a campaign, now, now that's something that we can understand. That's something that we can see. So you out there, you know, with you know the big old sign saying, "Hey, you know, this is why I'm here." Right. You know. Right. Um, or pass out flyers in advance. Yeah. Now, now we can be at ease a little bit. Yeah, but <laughs> see that 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 when yeah, when we see that. Yeah, lower your name. Yeah, lower your name. Yeah. yeah. See, <laughs> when we see that, you, you got that? Oh, mm -hmm. come on. First thing I'm thinking is mm -hmm. white supremacy, exactly. outlaws, bikers coming to shoot up my community. That's what I'm thinking. And I know that's not what your intention was. I pray to God it We was. know that now. Right. You know, we but then, know that coming in. Right. right. We want to make sure that we dialogue and make sure that you know how we feel because we're representative of our community. You know what I'm saying? Everybody don't agree on everything, but the black community needs to come together as one to unite. The, uh, the first time I came down here carrying sidearms, um, was Milwaukee was having the gun buyback and the walk 10 violence or whatever um, back in 2014. Um, and police chief, if we see you carrying a gun, we're going to put you on the ground and find out if you can have a gun. So, well, we're going to see because he legally can't do that. And I came down, I was wearing, I was wearing a kilt. <laughs> 
Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, had a sidearm on me. Fortunately, I had to get up to a family event in Green Bay, so I wasn't able to stick around for the gun buyback and try and you know, make some nice deals. Um, mm -hmm. The second time I came down was after the girl got shot in the playground. And I walked in that community, just be me by, by myself, only a sidearm at the time because I was, I was handing out pocket constitutions, talking to people about their rights, how, you know, obviously people in the black community are afraid to call the cops and say, hey, this, this is what the person looks like because their buddies are gonna come get them. Cops are gonna come in and say, oh, it smells like marijuana in your house, now we're gonna search your house. They're trying to help the cops out and then all of a sudden the cops are persecuting them. I know it happens. I, I, John Crawford, black guy who had the, uh, mm -hmm. the toy gun in Walmart, the cops came in and gunned him down. Uh, that was completely unacceptable. Come here, right. Kids should be able to play with guns. Not, not, not real guns, but you know, he was out there playing with a gun. He wasn't shooting anyone. Someone called the cops and kids shooting. Why are people making these false accusations and getting people killed? Um, the one that actually happened in Milwaukee, Dontre Hamilton. I read the news, I read the statements. Officer Manny should have been put on trial. He should have been convicted and he should be in prison. Um, Hamilton was laying on the sidewalk or on the side of the sidewalk on the grass or whatever. Someone from Starbucks called the cops. First set of cops came by, no big deal, left. Manny shows up, he says, oh, I saw the guy laying there with his eyes closed, he had his one foot up and he was rocking it back and forth. And the ordinance they're trying to say was um, no sleeping in the park. Well, he's got his foot up and he's wiggling back and forth. He said he was gonna go and talk to the, the Starbucks employees first. And as he was walking past Hamilton, Hamilton immediately turned his head and looked right at the officer. That tells you he wasn't sleeping. So he had no reason to stop the guy. He told him to get up, he started frisking him. All right, if you touch a cop like that, that's assault. The cop had no reason to touch him. The cop assaulted him. So when Hamilton, you know, put his arms down and shook away from the cop, he was, he was, you know, that was self-defense. It wasn't resisting, that was self-defense. Then, man, he pulled out his baton. Again, Hamilton defended himself by taking it. Officer Manny committed the crime. And you are not privileged to claim self-defense when you are the one that initiated the crime. The grand jury, I don't know what, the only thing I can think is the prosecutor didn't want to prosecute because... It's a white supremacy. Well, we, well, we understand. Well, it's just, I, I don't know if it's I the mean, white supremacy know, part, yeah, but, yeah, yeah. but the bigger part is, well, now the prosecutor's going to go after a cop. How's he going to get cops to cooperate with him to try and prosecute other people when, well, why aren't, we're not going to help him because he threw one of ours under the bus. Okay. Well, no, I said, no, it, no, one second, we, everything said, we understand, we hear, you got our attention. Right. So where do you go from here? It's like, what, what is the campaign that you're really trying to do? Because if you can come to the community and say, I'm trying to let you know about open carry, then that's redundant. So we're trying to figure out and I think that's what on the minds of a lot of us is like, what's the next step? What, what are you trying to do next? There are people from the community who want me to walk with them, and I, I intend to come back and walk with them. Well, you have five. I, that's five the person I want yeah, with. Sir, that's the sign right there. Huh? The white folks are signed. Yeah, but the white folks with them guns, that's a different well, sign. Saying, but this is, community. So you know, people, all in the community, what do you, what do you mean people from the community? Who, is, who exactly are you talking about? Uh, several black people in the community have reached out and said, hey, I want to walk with you. Great, I will come down and walk with them. And what's the purpose, I'm saying? What would the purpose be? If it's not a patrol, I think what is the purpose? Part of it is so they're more comfortable they, because they're walking with someone who, who knows the laws, um, who's willing to, you know, talk with people. <coughs> um, and the more they do it, the more accepted it becomes, and then they'll be more willing to, you know, share and say, "Hey, I can walk. I don't get harassed by the police. I don't get harassed by my neighbors. I don't get harassed by anyone else." Then, the, 
one of the things what got us here is you did upset the community. We ain't thinking about the police trying to mess with you. You know, you messing with the community, man. My question is why you go in front of District 1 and do that. I have no idea what District 1 is. Okay, hey, you say? Um, a couple, couple things. I know we're talking about a couple things. One, we're talking about, about perception. And our perception, meaning black people, people of color in this room, is pretty much unified based upon our experience and, and what it is. The challenge is, you're white. Everybody knows it. You know it. But your perception when it comes to actually understanding white supremacy and privilege because you're living it, and we see it every day, is the difference. You know what I'm saying? So we know why Manning ain't get charged. We know why none of these police officers across the country get charged, okay? We know why gun, gun control legislation was even first pushed because black, black, they don't want black folks to have guns. We know why they didn't crash 44 and why they don't need girls with guns in order to defend yourself. You know what I'm saying? So we know this history, and at the same time, community being educated on certain things, you have to consider the community going in, because you have to be educated about those communities and those perceptions. So if you know what happened with Andre Hamilton, I guess the, the, my question was, okay, um, if you're in Milwaukee during these different times, would you be willing to or have you reached out to different protests? You know what I'm saying? Um, made your voice heard as somebody distinct and different, because when you look on the TV, you see a bunch of people of color, they stop in traffic, and you get other people who are annoyed by that and they complain about it, but don't understand the historical situation, how it still affects us presently. So. The biggest bridge to get over, especially white folks in particular, is that the white supremacy and privilege, and not that they are necessarily advocating white supremacy, you're not doing that. But you do have this white privilege, so it's not just simply a Second Amendment issue. If it was just black and white as the laws, we would feel the same comfortability to be able to do it ourselves without an issue. But because we know the underlying situation of what goes on, we know Milwaukee failed, there's been, according to even the Huffington Post, the Washington Post is the worst place in the country for black people and black children, period, Milwaukee, West Allison, and Waukesha, and it comes always back to that racial component. So these things are obviously sensitive when it comes to that perception. I, I suggest anybody, um, especially white people in particular, because they have a different perception of 